So good evening, everybody. Today is June the 2nd, 2020. This is a new human experience podcast. And the topic for tonight is the illusion of worth. So before I begin, I just want to mention that um, the, the rest of this month, I will be talking about money, it's like something about money, but not, um, I want to approach the subject of money from a different point of view. So the topic for this week is the illusion of worth. So what kept, what uh, got me going is really thinking about worth, thinking about value. I just want to first um, ask a few questions is, how much is something worth? Have you ever wondered how people can place a dollar value and think about and, and really work out how much something is or anything is worth? So let's um, think back maybe about Mm, a little less than 200 years ago, when Vincent van Gogh, the, uh, the, the famous painter, so 200 years ago, he was not famous, he, but he loved to paint and he would do anything to paint. But while he was alive, though, he, he, I think he sold very few of his paintings. Most of the time, he would give um, his paintings away and there actually was at one point where he couldn't even um, he couldn't tr even give away his paintings because nobody that is around him really value the, the the paintings that he was doing and then fast forward about 200 years now a little less than 200 years now one of his paintings, uh, I think it's about um, a doctor friend, Ga Dr. Cachet, which is his friend. And so he painted a, a painting of his friend. And that painting was sold, um, I think it's about 30 years ago, and it was sold for $85 million. And way back <clears throat> when Van Gogh actually painted that painting, it was worth very, very little. So in the span of about 200 years, that painting has appreciated about millions and tens of millions. And, and so it's what something is worth is really very subjective. And now let me ask you another question then. How much is a diamond worth? How much a diamond is worth? It's really also very subjective as well. Even though if you walk into a place, walk into any jewelry store and you, you look at a diamond, it's, it's one price. Whereas if you try to um, go to a pawn, uh, 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 like, a pawn store and try to to use your diamond earrings let's say as a, um, a collateral to get some money it's a very different price this is a very different value that you would get from that pair of diamond same pair of diamond earrings and so there are actually um, things are the value of things are really not intrinsic at all. It's very subjective. The same thing, but may cost very differently, like fast, um, a lot of difference between the circumstances of what something costs. And it is really hard for us to comprehend the, the value of an object. So let us now then look at value of ourselves, a human being. And before I ask the question, the big question of, you know, how much you value yourself, let me ask you, start by asking you, how much do you think the Queen of England is worth? She's maybe 
um, a f- one of the few people that is the richest people in the world. And most would believe that if I, if I say that most people would believe it because he's the queen of, of England. He has all those crowns and uh, own a lot of property and all and all of that. And then um, what is your perception of her as a person? Do you think of her as being a good person or not? She is one of the the longest reigning monarch and she has been really doing her duty and and really um, doing her best to fulfill her public duties to, to as much as she can or at least perceived to be. However, what if I tell you that recently I've learned that she's actually not the rightful queen of England. She's actually a pretender and that there is actually um, there is another rightful king of England, I should say, because he, he happened, this person happened to be uh, this monarch, the rightful monarch of England is actually somebody else. And he he is um, somebody by the name of Gregory Hallett. So now I'm not asking you to believe me because I'm not even sure if that is believable myself. However, I'm just um, asking, does that, does the, the, does me mentioning that change your mind about what the queen is worth? Because let's say that, let's pretend and and look at the um, scenario that she is a pretender. She's actually a fake. Does that change how you perceive her value then or her worth? Rather than being the longest reigning monarch in the history of England, he's, she's actually been um, a pretender, the longest reigning, the, the longest pretender that Britain has ever known. So that really colors how we perceive her as a person. And of course, I'm not asking you to believe me or even um, try to debate whether those rumors are true or not. I'm simply asking you to look at how you evaluate a person's worth, a person's value. In the old paradigm of 3D, we evaluate worth by what a person can do, or more specifically, what a person can do for us, for for me, or for you. We evaluate the um, worth of a person by what connection they have or how much money they have accumulated, and et cetera, and et cetera. And that really, um, there's nothing wrong with that. However, it's the old paradigm that we think in terms of these. Because in the new paradigm, in the fifth dimension paradigm, in fifth dimension and higher, that what a person can do for, for me and what a person has accumulated, what are their connections, those are actually not as valuable in the higher dimensions. And it is time for us to start to move away from the idea of value or worth altogether. Because value or worth really um, devalue us. It, it actually makes all of us smaller and, and lesser in terms of um, what the reality is. The reality is that each and every one of us is a divine spark of the source. And we are, each and every one of us, no matter how small we are, no matter how large we are, no matter how young, how old, what the color of our skin may be, and what our beliefs may be, what we can do, or what we um, can, what, what we are connected to, 
all of that is actually pales in comparison to the fact that each and every one of us are simply another aspect of ourselves and also another aspect of the ultimate creator source. So when we um, start, when we look at a person as being someone is worth while or is is valuable and the other person is not we are actually um simply not looking and recognizing that we are all simply another aspect of the source that we all of us are and we are um we are making judgments from a certain perspective which does not promote oneness in oneness everybody is invaluable and everyone is absolutely beyond um it, there is no amount of money there is no figure that can express how precious and how valuable we are so let's i'm suggesting that we should start to move away from the this idea of value and worth as as much as possible and really start that journey of letting go of thinking and evaluating people as um, how they may or may not be of value to us and really start to think of that person as hey what kind of an experience what kind how much we what kind of a co-creation that i can i can um create with this person and look at it that way that everyone is a a different playmate and it depends on how we want to play with them <clears throat> and what they are up for to play and it is actually part of reclaiming our sovereignty as well because each and every one of us are actually in our own right as much of a queen as much of a king as the next person is the idea that a queen is worth more than a peasant is an antiquated idea it's an idea that's only based on um, a certain value and we are moving hopefully we are moving out of that system of value And when we can start to really look at everyone from the point of oneness, then we are all queen. If just one of us is a queen, that means everyone is a queen. If just one of us is a king, that means every one of us is a king as well. We may not occupy the role, we may not play the role of a king or a queen, However, in terms of value and worth, we are every bit as valuable and worthwhile as any royalty. So, the, so what I'm trying to say is to really start to let go of the idea that some of us are more valuable than others and in order for us to be more valuable we have to pursue um knowledge for the sake of increasing our value and we sh and to go move away from pursuing something for the sake of increasing our value not i'm not saying don't pursue a skill don't if you really enjoy for example if you really enjoy painting then go and paint and practice your painting until you can paint anything that you wish to paint until you can paint like um 
Picasso until you can paint like a Van Gogh. If that is your, if that truly is your desire, and not to pursue painting in order to increase your value, because when you pursue something in order to increase your value, the the unacknowledged, the unconscious um, side of it is that you are not valuable unless you can do this. So you're actually already unconsciously devaluing yourself. Whereas if you pursue something, if you do something just for the sheer joy of you enjoying to de do that activity, then the more you pursue it, you actually increase your own enjoyment of life. And really this enjoyment of life is, is really uh, the true value of our, of our life, of our existence on this planet, rather than pursuing to increase our worth. Because we... Every time you try to increase your worth or make yourself more valuable, you acknowledge that you're not already valuable. So that's why you're trying to increase it. Whereas go from the point of view that you are already a queen or you are already a king and you are just pursuing your passion, something that you love to do. And that really is the, the true mandate of everybody who is living on earth right now is to really come and play full out. And not saying that, that does, that does not mean that you um, are going to all of a sudden get the, 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 get to wear the crown jewel or, or things like that. While we, until the system is all changed over, even though you may be a queen, you may still have to go do a nine to five job in order to put food on the table or put a roof over your head. That does not mean that what you do is defines who you are. You are who you are. You are a queen. You are the, the divine. And you have a nine to five job, which you may be a cleaning lady, or you may be um, serving uh, coffee at Starbucks. That's just what you do. That's not who you are. Who you are is a queen or a king. And what you do in order to keep playing and keep putting food on the table and roof over your head is just what you do. It's not who you are. So there is a very different um, way of thinking at this. And really get to the point of starting to reclaim your sovereignty. And don't let other people give you ideas to define your worth or define who you are. Only you can define who you are. And who you are is not defined by what you do. What you do is you know, what you needed to do in order to get through the day. But who you are is this defined spark. And that's really all I want to share for this evening.